God. Amen. Amen. Okay, we are in Revelations chapter 13 and verse 2. And uh, so now we see the beast that is coming out of the sea actually looks uh, similar to the beast that was coming out of Daniel chapter 7. We see some of the same uh, physical characteristics uh, in both creatures. And so a lot of theologians have linked the symbology of uh, Daniel chapter 7 to Revelation chapter 13, which actually makes a lot of sense. And so if we're using that symbology, then the creature that is coming out, the creature that has just come out of the sea, this beast, uh, resembles a leopard. So the majority of the beast's body looks like the body of a leopard. And uh, that's interesting. Um, and his feet uh, like those of a bear. And his mouth like that of a lion and then we see the dragon gave him his authority and power so now uh, we know we know that um that 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 leopard uh and the bear and the lion symbolize specific empires that have come and gone in our human history and i think it's also unique as far as the symbology um where these different body parts are in this beast that's coming out in revelations uh chapter 13. uh it's it's just awesome and so we see uh that the picture that we see in daniel um the lion represents babylon the babylonian empire uh the bear represent medo persian empire and the leopard represented the Greece empire. And then there was a fourth animal that was so dreadful and indescribable um, and so terrifying the characteristics the pre of the previous beast. Um, it really represented the final world empire um, that was unnamed as far as what it was. Um, but we see that Greece being the empire that ushered in really the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire absorbed the Greek culture in so many ways. Um, and so we see that this, this leopard here, he's kind of got a lot of Greek in it. This leopard got a lot of Greek in it, you know? And, uh, and, and what that looks like is, um, he is he is clever. Because the Greeks were philosophers. The Greeks were highly intelligent and intellectual. Um, and so the Greeks were charismatic. So much so, even though the Romans uh, conquered basically the world, uh, they still wanted uh, the Greek culture. Because when Alexander the Great went through uh, and he conquered everything, everything he, he, he attacked, he conquered. Uh, and then he divided up everything he conquered. And he was the one that came up with the idea that everything he conquered would have one language and it would be the Greek language. And so the Greek were, were highly intelligent. And so we see this beast here, um, that's the majority of his makeup. But more than just this, 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 this influential intelligence this guy has, uh, he also has the mouth of a lion. Now, now that's 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 incredible when you think about that. Uh, this this mouth of a lion. Uh, we know the Bible says Satan goes about like a what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And this beast has a mouth like a lion. So 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 he speaks with boldness and authority, and he's intimidating. I don't know if you ever heard a lion roar for real, but if you've ever heard it, it's a it's a frightening thing. I wouldn't want to be out there in the jungle and hear something like that coming after me, especially when them jokers is hungry. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's something to behold. I'm telling you. Um, but nevertheless, um, this is the, the 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 boldness and the carriage 
um, that a lion has, and and so uh, he uses that 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 fear and that intimidation along with that influential intelligence uh, that he that he boasts as well, and uh, and so uh, we see also that he has um, the feet of a bear. Now uh, the Medo Persian Empire, them dudes, them dudes was conquering stuff so fast, so fierce. And I mean, they were into all kinds of idolatry, false god worship, all kinds of heinous and horrific um, acts and things that they would do. I mean, just just crimes against humanity. And this is the feat of this creature. This is this is how he gets around. This is how he travels. And 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 so now we're getting a makeup of of this beast. And I told you some theologians thought that this beast was um, just an empire. Now, there was a fourth beast described in Daniel. We do believe that's the Roman Empire. And we believe that there's going to be a resurgence of the characteristics of the Roman Empire in this final world empire uh, that is yet to come. But I do believe it is in the process of being built. And America is being prepped. I believe the world is being prepped uh, to receive this last empire. And as we go through 13 and get through 14, you're going to see the emergence of the characteristics of this empire and what it's really going to wind up looking like. And it's going to be a frightening thing. I can tell you that. Now, like I said, some people believe that um, this beast that we're talking about uh, is actually uh, an empire. Uh, I don't particularly subscribe to that belief uh, because there's too many personal characteristics that go along with the beast. And here's where we ended up uh, last week <clears throat> when we were talking about this uh, particular point right here. So let's let's jump a little bit in there. Uh, number one, uh, the beast is worshipped as a god. Um, I don't think they're going to worship a government as a god. Um, and so that's that's one characteristic that has normally throughout history has been attributed to an entity or a personality or a person, you know, or or an object, um, but never a um, governmental system uh, has been worshipped. And so I think that's clue number one is that this beast uh, is a persona. It's actually a person. Uh, and so this beast is literally worshiped as a god. And so the next thing we see is an image is set up of the beast and the whole world is commanded to worship it. This makes far more sense if the beast is a man, much more than if it's an empire or government. Through history, man has always bowed down to images and political rulers or figures, you know. And, you know, humanity has always been tripping off of that. Also, the beast has a proper name, you know, a name uh, expressive of a particular number. And it says it's the number of man. And we know that number to be 666. Um, and usually, you know, governments aren't identified quite like that either. Um, and so it's, e it's easier to conceive more of that as an individual uh, than a government as well. Uh, the fourth point I would make about that is that the beast is finally damned. As we go through the text, you're going to find out that this dude is, is he goes to perdition. He, he's, he's thrown into the lake of fire. And so, you know, we're going to throw a government in the lake of fire? No, I, this, this is a person that we are talking about. Um, and this person is going to be so charismatic, so influential, uh, so boastful. And I love the idea that that uh, he's going to be influential and slick as a leopard, but 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 his mouth is what's going to be tripping people out. You know, that's why the Bible says Satan goes about like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion. Satan is not a roaring lion. Satan don't even have the teeth of a roaring lion. But his intimidation factor, his fear factor, 
is like that of a lion. And so will this political ruler, this dictator, this antichrist, this beast is going to have that as well. But the dude is going to be dropped off in the lake of fire um, and he's going to be suffering for all eternity. And we see that uh, at the end of Revelations in chapter 20. So the Antichrist is also called the son of perdition, you know, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, as was Judas. Y'all remember that? Uh, John 17, 12, Judas was a man, not a system or a government. So it follows that the Antichrist will also be a man. With all this in mind, you know, we, we just have to have to come to a consensus um, that we are not dealing with a futuristic government. We're dealing with a human being possessed, totally possessed and filled with the unholy spirit, dominated, controlled, and being used. And when it says that the dragon, who we know is Satan, gives his authority to uh the beast you know what's going on you know you know that he is being used as a puppet because he only represents the dragon and later on we'll see who gets worshiped you know uh out of this deal it's incredible so it says right there that the dragon gave him his power his throne and his great authority now why would satan give his authority, his power, and his throne to somebody else if it wasn't a person that truly embodied everything that he is. That's exactly what's going on. So we see that this is literally the Antichrist. Satan is literally trying to put himself in the position of God the Father, with the Antichrist being his son. You tell me he ain't tripping if he ain't lost his mind. We're getting to that unholy trinity that we were talking about earlier. But the beast is not an ordinary man and nor can we consider him an ordinary person. He is called the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit in Revelations 11, 7 and 17, 8. And an ordinary man does not come out of no pit. We know that. So, so we know that he is totally demonic. Totally demonic. And so our expectations for what this demonic antichrist-like uh, creature is going to bring forth on planet Earth at this day and this time is going to be off the chain. It's going to be mind boggling. I'm telling you. All right, let's go on to the next scripture. All right, here we go. Verse three. And I saw one of the heads which seemed to have a fatal wound, but his fatal wound was healed. And the entire earth followed after the beast in amazement, in amazement. Now, now we are getting the big setup. Now we see the, the strategy, the satanic strategy that is being put forth to beguile the planet Earth, the people of the planet Earth. Now, this ain't going to play no role in beguiling us or tricking us or fooling us. As we look on in scripture, we'll see that we aren't going to be the ones that's going to be deceived. But the ones that are going to be deceived are the ones who have not committed their life to Jesus Christ. The ones who are not believers, the ones who are not saved. We are talking about unbelievers, people who have not made a decision for Christ are going to be susceptible to the influence of the devil. And he's going to make that distinction himself. And we're going to see that. So let's dig into this to this scripture real quick. So one of the heads wounded 
with a mortal wound, not a superficial injury. Um, and perhaps it may have been as a judgment of God. Maybe he was battling uh, the saints. Maybe, uh, 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 you know, uh, an attack of the believer trying to take him out. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, there have been many movies uh, that showed stuff like that. Like once people realized who the Antichrist was, uh, they would show like uh, some some group, normally not Christian group, but some group um, that that has the skill set to assassinate somebody. And of course, once they identify him as the Antichrist, a uh, man tries to take him out. And there have been Christian movies where something similar happened, where they tried to kill uh, the Antichrist. And uh, neither in, the, in, the, in neither of those situations did that turn out very well or to the ideal of the people who were attempting to try to kill him. So uh, we don't know how he was wounded. Um, we don't even know if, if, if he intentionally caused himself to be wounded. I, I kind of lean, lean, lean toward that. Because at this point, Satan has a lot of authority. He has a lot of power. God has given him room in this, this, this three and a half year period. The last half of the seven year tribulation, he's given him room to do whatever is in his heart to do with limitations. So let's dig a little deeper. And the deadly wound was healed. The recovery of the beast increased his fame and authority. Think about this strategy, this satanic strategy. And all the world marveled. They wondered and followed the beast. They followed the beast. They were so amazed that he recovered from a mortal I mean, he was in the head. Man, you get, you get jacked up in the head, it's death. It's almost like a death sentence. And if it says he was mortally wounded, that means he was supposed to die. As a matter of fact, they probably believe he did die because this would be the, the great facade. Because if he is supposed to be the antichrist, then his fake death, like Christ's real death, it would appear that he was able to bring himself back to life. Now, you know, he planned the world for food, but now he's a fake Messiah. And, and the people of the world are viewing him as that fake Messiah. It's amazing that the world will go after something like that, but not Jesus, who was the real Messiah. But they wholeheartedly is like, yeah, this dude is the man. I mean, who could who could stand up to this dude? And it says the world just marveled and wondered and they followed the beast. They were so enamored. They were so amazed by uh, his ability. Now, I told you the guy was charismatic. He was slick as a leopard, fast on his feet. And the dude, I'm telling you, he had the boldness of a lion. He was boisterous. He was influential. He was charismatic. So they kind of was had feelings for him uh, when he got injured. So they was they was feeling some kind of way when he got hurt, and they would have mourned him severely if he would have died and stayed dead. The fact that he was able uh, to be healed from that mortal wound sealed it for so many people, and they began to follow him played right into the devil's hands i'm telling you this is just crazy anyway let's look at the next scripture come on y'all now as we go i'm gonna tell y'all this is some cray cray stuff up in here. They fell down and worshiped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. They also worship the beast saying, who is like as great as the beast 
And who is able to wage war against him? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Who is able to wage war against him? Now, y'all know it is getting off the chain by now. First of all, they were all amazed by him, and now they following him, and now they went that next step. Because after following him, now they are worshiping not just him, but the dragon, Satan himself, and the beast, the Antichrist. Worship. That's a whole nother level of distinction. As the people worship this beast, they bow down before the government that the satanic government that's in place, excuse me. It may be that they don't know uh, that they're bowing down to Satan. Matter of fact, uh, with their idea of who Satan is, um, they wouldn't openly uh, worship Satan, uh, which is why the beast is so important to the dragon because it gives a human face to Satan where they could look at Satan and worship him without knowing who he really uh, is. And even in scripture, we see that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Think about that. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 uh, to 15. Uh, and, and you know, <laughs> so, so, so I think we got it twisted. We got this thing twisted, man. We got this thing twisted. Anytime we run around here with pictures of Satan in a red suit with horns and a tail and looking ugly or looking horrible, you know we got it twisted. When the text clearly tells us in 2 Corinthians 11, it says, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, who end will be according to their works. This is what Paul said to Corinthians in his second letter. Come on, y'all. This is, <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Now, now what Paul is saying, I hope y'all are hearing, because Paul is not just saying Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. He got ministers who transform their cells into ministers of righteousness. Who you think they, they reaching out to? Who you think they ministering to? What church you think they in? Satan is bold, y'all. Satan is bold. He bold, I'm telling y'all. He is bold. And so we see now uh, his scheme is so slowly unfolding in our face, slowly being revealed his strategy. And the world doesn't see it. They can't see it. They are blinded and they cannot see what is going on in the world and in front of their face. The only ones who can see with clarity of sight and vision is the saints. We're the only ones who can see and know what's really going on. And Satan going to do something about that. I'm telling you, he is going to do something about that. So, and I, I mean, this is really weird, y'all. Uh, Satan's worship becomes more and more popular each year. How many know that's the truth? Each year, I mean, they got TV shows about him, they got movies about him, and he's winning. It frustrates me to no end when I see the preachers, the pastors that they put in these films are so corrupt and so weak and so mealy mouth and have no power. It's like they strip of any power at all and they're defeated and they're weak and they're frail and they're victims. 
make me want to slap the devil upside the head because you know he's a liar. And so the picture that he's painting for the world, even in social media, I mean, the picture he's painting is that you cannot get any help from the saints. You can't get no help from the pastors, the preachers, the ministers, the elders. Ain't nobody can help you. You out there because they ain't right either. They corrupted and they're corruptible. So they ain't right. And if they ain't right, ain't nobody right. And so you see the scheme of the devil is already at work in our society. The, the, the pastors have such a bad reputation. I mean, I can, I can literally quote you and I will not do it. I could quote you names of pastors and tele-evangelists, even pastors in our own community who have fallen. But, 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 but that's a small percentage of the, 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 the presbytery, of, of the clergy that is, that is faithful and doing the right thing, that is honoring God with their life. We always hear about the ones that are falling and failing but we don't hear about the ones that are doing the right so so seldom. So seldom do we hear about the people of God and how they are triumphant and how they are victorious and how they are defeating the enemy in his own ground on his own turf. Literally going in his 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 house and taking taking back what he is taking captive. I ain't mean to preach. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting emotional over here. I'm feeling some kind of way about this. Because see, this is so real, y'all. This is real. I'm going to press pause because, you know, before we go, go on, because, you know, we're going on. If anybody has comments, questions, or what, this is the moment uh, that you can say something right now because the brother going to put it on pause for a second uh, to give you an opportunity uh, to make your comments, and then we will continue on. Boy, y'all like gone, brother. Yeah. Oh, God. Pastor, you're awesome, you know, and we just want to thank God for, you know, having, you know, truth. And it's so paramount at this time. And I was just thinking about, you know, we are in that great falling away. We are in that great falling away. Um, where truth right now, it's almost, well, actually at this point, everybody can have a truth now. You can have a lying truth. You can have alternative truth. And the truth is of Christ, the way, truth, and life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So it's, it's hard when you're right, when you see these weak, fallen, friendly pastors that are leading saints away. And we all have to give an account, good or bad. And it's like, you know what, but we have to be in season to know. We have to know this. The Bible declares we need to be in season. So I just thank you for giving us truth and, and guiding us, you and Sister Angel. Well, I, you know, I've always been thankful for that, even when I was a younger man in, in ministry with you all. So I'm very blessed and I just wanna say thanks. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I have a question kind of thing. Okay, so what, what you just shared is basically um, that with the Antichrist coming, um, he's going to deceive, and I know the word says he's going to deceive many. Yeah. And, and But um, how does this and then it also says can you elaborate on a, the part about the great falling away because there's a time where we can there's a time where he he deceives many and there's a time where even the elect of god can be where does that part about the elect of god can be deceived come in is it now no that's my question um well that particular text he's talking about a time period um, where he says, if those days uh, are not shortened, even the very elect would be affected. Um, and so God is making sure that those days are shortened and that we are not subjected 
to the even the possibility of falling away. And um, that's literally what uh, the text says. Uh, but there is going to be um, a falling away before um, tribulation, you know, uh, because people are going to uh, be complacent in their faith, compromising in their walk and their belief, and they're going to allow uh, society to water down uh, their relationship with God. Um, they are going to allow um, the enemy to spoon feed them um, doubt, unbelief, fear. Uh, even as you pray, uh, the enemy will sow seeds in there uh, to make you think, well, why would God answer that? Is God going to answer that? And so this has been his modus operandi for a very long time. He's been moving in this in this area, and he's been acting and doing this long before we were born. He was doing it to our great 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 grandparents. And so I think cumulatively, cumulatively, I think that's what's going to contribute. Uh, when you see just from the '60s to now, you know uh, the folks that are coming up now are much more sub subjected to the attacks of the enemy. Um, and I think more so because of their parenting, because of how um, loosely and liberally uh, people were raised, you know? Um, and so even, you can't even blame it uh, on the kids of the day because somebody gave birth to them and somebody raised them, you know? And God holds uh, parents accountable for how we raise our children, you know, uh, and he is so serious about that. And so we have subjected our children to societal norms and societal customs and societal, um, and I would dare say, satanically influenced media. And so we have put them in harm's way to some extent. When I say we, I'm talking humanity. I'm talking society. I'm not specifically talking about uh, you guys. Um, the saints, we hope and would hope that they have been instilled and engrafted in, in, in the word of God in their kids. Because even if their kids uh, go left or go right, they still have the seed of faith on the inside of them. They still have something on the inside of them that God can grab a hold of, that God can use. And the fact that we cover them with the power of prayer will, will sustain them until they get in their right mind. That's why I believe um, the prodigal son was so powerful, that story of how one day he woke up in his right mind. You know, one day he looked at his circumstance, his situation, and, and, and all of a sudden he had a moment of clarity. Well, in our case, you know, we out there, and most of us can raise our hand and say we was out there. There came a moment of clarity where we had just enough sense to listen to the Holy Spirit because we might not have even been reading the word. We might not have even been in church. We might have even been a bar in a bar. There was a dude who was sitting on the bar stool drinking with his friend when he had a moment of clarity. In that moment of clarity, and I kid you not, Angel will probably tell you what time it was. It was like two o'clock in the morning. In that moment of clarity, the dude said to his friend, man, I can't live like this no more. I can't live like, and I bet his mother was praying for him. He all the way over there in Germany getting drunk in a bar. And he said, I can't do this no more, man. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over to Kevin's house right now and I'm going to get saved. Who thinks like that? Where that thought come from? That dude showed up on my door. And it's weird because Angel answered the door. I don't like stuff like that. I want my baby answering the door, you know, that time of night. But brother was getting catching that Z's, you know. He was deep in it, you know. He was, he was, well, anyway. Um, but baby answered the door, came up, and she was excited. 
because she saw something in that guy that she had never seen before. She saw faith to believe. And so I don't give up on any of our kids who may have went out there and, and got caught up in this, got, got caught up in that, uh, because I know the power of God is real. And so, uh, so yeah, the devil has influences. The devil can manipulate. The devil's greatest weapon is his mouth. But guess what? The greatest weapon we have is our mouth because out of our mouth comes the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. I'm sorry, Brina. <laughs> I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> Did I answer your question, sis? Hey, Amen. You got me shouting over here. Oh, you shout? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yes, there is a great falling away, and I believe it is prolonged up into um, the tribulation period, because that's when. Um, it's going to be on because by the time tribulation hits, people are going to be perfect. They're going to be perfectly positioned for Satan to take advantage of her and to exploit her. And when the enemy raises his head as an antichrist, the line is drawn. People, I mean, even if they've been 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 backsliding, even if they've been walking, trying to walk the line and be. Uh, lukewarm, they're trying to be hot one day, cold one day, it ain't gonna matter. Because when Satan decides that this is it, he's not gonna allow you to be lukewarm anymore. Satan's gonna cause you to make a decision. Either you're gonna be for me or against me. And if you're against me, I'm gonna kill you. So there ain't gonna be no more lukewarm action going on. It's gonna be a hard and fast decision. The good news is we know by scripture that a lot of people are going to make the right decision. That's exciting. Anytime the Bible talks about a number that no man can number enter into heaven, we can't even count it. A lot of people made the right decision. People came back to God. So even in that great, great falling away uh, where the saints, some of the saints, um, are gonna allow themselves to be shaken by the world and the circumstances, the situation is going on in the world because they have been watered down in their faith, uh, because their lack of love for God's word, their lack of love for God, fellowship with God's people, um, their desire to run after the things of the world instead of after the things of the kingdom. Um, all of that's gonna come to a quick end when the Antichrist gets into power. And so we want our kids right before that happens, um, because you don't want to be caught up in that in that falling away. Um, to be honest with you, that's that's dangerous ground. You know, you are literally walking out of your own covering and protection, and you're making yourself vulnerable to attack. You're putting yourself and the people that are with you at risk. At risk for the enemy to come in and do whatever he he wants to do. Any other questions before we jump into that next one? Okay. Now listen to this. It says, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war? When, when did war come up? We weren't talking about war. But all of a sudden in this scripture, he says, the people that are following him and worshiping him says, who is like the beast? Don't that sound familiar? We've been saying, who is like the Lord? Nobody. Who is like the Lord? No, 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 nobody. And they sit here saying, who is like the beast? You know, they not, they not, I'm gonna tell y'all, they hook, line, and sinker. They are caught up in the game. And they, and they don't know what to do. And then they go on and say, man, who can even make war with this guy? Can't nobody beat him. He is the ultimate winner, the ultimate warrior. Can't nobody touch him. They worship the beast and the dragon behind the beast. My God. 
just what Satan wants. Let's get in this scripture. I, I, I'm trying to get through this thing best I can, but this is some good stuff up in here. Oh, here we go, y'all. Here we go. This is it. Verse five. And the beast was given a mouth. Now, we talked about that mouth of a lion. Listen to this. The power of speech, persuasive, convincing, charismatic, influential speech. Listen to this. Uttering great things and arrogant, blasphemous words. And he was given the freedom and authority to act and to do as he pleased for 42 months. That's three and a half years. That's the last half of the seven year tribulation. He's turning it up. And he opened up his mouth to speak blasphemies, abusive speech and slander against our God to blaspheme his name, the name of Jesus, and his tabernacle, talking about the church, his people, and those who lived in heaven. He talking about everybody. Everybody. Come on, y'all. Now, y'all know, y'all know it done got real crazy. It done got real crazy and real plain. Ain't nobody gonna be, I'm telling y'all, there will be nobody who is lukewarm in this situation. Everybody on planet Earth is going to either be for him or against him. And he's going to be talking all of this madness. Because he's, I mean, the, the jig is up. He ain't trying to hide no more. He ain't working covertly, subversively anymore. He is not got, he don't have a hidden agenda anymore. He is full out on, on point offensive in your face telling you who he is and literally blaspheming God and everything that has to do with God, everything that has to do with the kingdom of God. This boy is running his mouth. The scary thing is he is given the freedom and the authority to do that. Now, any saints on the planet at this time, and there will be some, whew, Jesus said, uh, woe to them who give suck in those days, who literally uh, have babies, and babies are nursing. He's woe to those who are going to have to run, you know, who's going to have to be in flight, um, you know, because they got to, they got to make a move. Because now it's plain what this dude is all about and what he's doing. The people are already worshiping him. And now, rather than just rejoice in their worship, he starts attacking God and the things of God and the people of God. Lord, have mercy. As people worship the beast and bow down before his governor, it may be that they do not know they are actually bowing down to Satan. I kind of subscribe to that himself. But the worship of Satan, nonetheless, they are clearly worshiping both the beast and the dragon. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And listen to this. Speaking great things and blasphemies. Lord, have mercy. He could be even called a blasphemer. Uh, get a new title other than Antichrist. They can call him blasphemer because he is the end time dictator. This beast of a man who speaks against God and everything God stands for. I mean, his name is Tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. Uh, some Roman emperor, emperors uh, blasphemed God that way as well. But they did not fulfill the prophecy, even though they were a, a prefigure of the fulfillment, you know, because they proclaimed themselves as God and spoke against God uh, as well. And he's given the authority to continue for 42 months. The beast continues without restraint by God for a period of 42 months. The familiar three and a half years. 
The duration of the period shows that the beast has fulfilled the reign for the first half of the final seven years and that during the whole time he is still under God's authority. Isn't that something? Why does the beast blaspheme those who dwell in heaven? This means he speaks against those uh, who were taken up in the rapture and therefore out of reach. Now, the theologian who wrote this believes that the rapture would have occurred. Um, and so uh, these are pre-tribulationists who believe that the rapture occurred before tribulation started. And so the beast is blaspheming those who dwell in heaven. Well, we already know up to this point, there's a whole bunch of folk that dwell in heaven because there have been so many martyrs um, that are, are, are who died for the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said they are under the altar of God. I mean, they, they're walking around in heaven with palms dressed in white. And, and so heaven is full and still being filled up by Satan. You know, he, he taking folks out. And so I think also, and he doesn't say this, but I, I believe this, um, he's blaspheming the ones that kicked his butt out of heaven. Because at this point, he has no more access to heaven. He can't go before the Father anymore. He has been deposed. He has been rejected. He's been excommunicated. He done been kicked out. He done got the left foot of fellowship and he can't go back in. The door is closed. And him and the third of the heavenly host that went with him are done as far as heaven is concerned. And so he down there hot. And so he got number but words for all of them folk that put him where he is today. Well, in this text, praise God. So uh, here's the other key thing. He was given authority. The beast continues without restraint by God for this three and a half years. That's, that's incredible. Uh, when you think about that, that God literally gives him uh, this little space, this little room to do whatever, you know? It's almost similar to Job's situation. When God gave the enemy a little space, a little room, God knew something that the devil didn't. And so the devil went down there thinking he was going to make Job uh, blaspheme God, curse God, and die. And that did not happen. And God knew that would not happen. He knew Job's heart. He knew Job's faith. And he knew Job's tenacity and loyalty and commitment to his God. And Job stood faithful to God, no matter what Satan did to him. And so now, uh, with that thought in mind, we see God releases Satan to do whatever he wants to do. And Satan does. Oh man, I got nine minutes. Let me go on, let me get down to the scripture. I wanna get this other scripture, this is, man, time flies. Here we go. All right. And I'm going to read this quick. He was also permitted. Listen, y'all, listen. He was also permitted to wage war against the saints, the people of God, and to overcome them. Come on, y'all. And authority and power over every tribe and people, language and nation. All the inhabitants of the earth will fall down and worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written, excuse me, since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb, who has been slain as a willing sacrifice. Woo! Come on. It's on now, y'all. It's on. Just like you see in this picture, he's 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 got the guillotine out there, and you accept him or you accept the beheading. Wow. It's real now. It's real. 
So I told you, ain't no more lukewarmness. Ain't no playing both sides of the fence, trying to walk the line and, and be carnal and be worldly and be saintly at the same time. You ain't gonna be daylight and darkness no more. You ain't gonna be salt and, and, and bitter, uh, I mean, sweet and bitter at the same time. It's gonna be real, it's gonna be on. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig a little more in this, but not now because we got like seven minutes. I don't see my lovely wife, but I can feel her eyes upon me, <laughs> telling me it time it time wind it up. Okay. Right. Ha ha ha. I told you. <laughs> All right, praise God. So we got any discussion, comments, or anything um, uh, before we go to prayer? Man, y'all look stunned. <laughs> and we ain't even dug into what's what's really happening in this last verse that we just read. Well, we next week we're gonna dig deep into that. Cause I mean it's 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 awesome. Because it looks like, and, and I want y'all to get this. I'm sorry, I'm excited. It looks like we are defeated. You know, because it says that he prevailed against us, he overcame us, he overpowered us. It looked like we were defeated. It felt like we were defeated. But you know what? There was a scripture that the pastor who preached uh, for uh, Brandon Sunday brought up in Colossians chapter 218. At the time when the enemy thought that he had won, Jesus had spoiled or, 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 put uh, the enemy on display in ultimate embarrassment because when he thought he had won a victory, he had actually experienced his greatest defeat because on the cross, Jesus defeated the devil. All the powers and principalities, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness and heavenly places, he defeated them all and held them to a public shame. Everything in heaven had a big laugh that day. When they, he thought he had stripped down the Savior, abused the Savior, murdered the Savior, and all he did was save our lives and save our souls. That was the worst he did, was save our souls. And so even in this moment, it may appear like he's he's winning and he's, he's, he's got us, you know, under his thumb. He's sending us where we want to go anywhere. Everybody trying to get to be with the Lord. So he ain't, what are you doing? What can he do? Paul figured it out early. He said, man, you know, death, where's your victory? Grave, where's your sting? I, I don't feel that. Why? Because you can. the best you can do is send me where I want to go. So this, this tent, this tabernacle may suffer a little bit, but it's temporal. It's temporary. It's not eternal. Where I'm going is an eternal situation. So, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There I go, I done blew three of your minutes. Okay. <laughs> if y'all got comments, y'all better come on. Wow. Well, hey, Calvin. Hey, I'm can ready. you? Whew. Okay. So I just had to take all that in. Phew. So, <laughs> okay. Because I'm thinking, is this like going to be like, it looks, is it going to be like on a church way? It's going to be like one big church. Oh, you mean like Satan, when Satan gets in power? Yeah. It's going to be worse than that. No. Because it's on a global stage. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it'd be, it would be different if it was just like a church or like even in a church building. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than that. And you can tell even by the diagram, um, mm -hmm. he, he this dude is making war with everything Christian on the planet. Okay. Yeah, that's a different picture. 
Well, it's just making me think. Lord, let me be ready. Let me have my armor on. Let me be ready to say, God, I'll go for you regardless of what happened. Amen. That's all. It just made me think, God. I got to trust you fully. Amen. Amen. Ain't no time to be playing around, that's for sure. No. Anybody else? <laughs> well, I, I must apologize if I have stunned you. <laughs> Pastor Brandon, you have any any final That's comments? That's a good word. Yeah. I, I oh, think, okay. Vernon said, okay. Yeah, okay. That, that that word was delicious, man. It, it, when it's good, you know, we, we still chewing on it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about you, but when I got a good meal, I, I'm quiet while I'm eating. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, okay. I hear you, bro. My wife over here on mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That brother smacking his lips. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, praise God. I'm going to attempt to stop here. I am over time so i'm going to turn it over to angel and uh uh if there's any specific prayer request uh please please uh uh offer them up well praise the lord everybody <laughs> once again amen the spirit of god hey he did not disappoint. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we just thank you, Pastor. Amen. So, Father, we uh, give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless and exalt you, Lord, uh, for all that you're doing in us and through us. We thank you for this word. We thank you for uh, um, it just inspires us, Father God, and it compels us, Father God, uh, to even draw even more closer to you. And be ready, not get ready, but be ready, Father God. Um, and just be uh, instant in season, out of season, Lord. Just always being ready, Father God. Because we don't know, Father God, uh, what's going to be around the corner. When we go around the corner, we don't know what's going to happen, Father God. We don't know who we're going to, uh, uh, who's going to approach us or or who we are going to approach but Lord we just want to be ready Father God we don't know who you want us to witness to I mean tomorrow might be a, a complete stranger that uh, we we uh, begin to uh, share uh, your word with Lord we don't know but Lord you know you are the one to direct our footsteps Father God and so Father we thank you for directing our footsteps Lord we thank you, Father God, uh, for your, your your awesome power, your awesome anointing. Uh, we thank you for healing tonight. We thank you for deliverance tonight. Uh, we thank you for strength tonight. And we thank you for peace, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to everyone, Father, in their families, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name, Father God. And so, Lord, we just thank you uh, until we come again. Uh, we just thank you for being with us, blessing us, encouraging us, Lord, in your word, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, baby. Amen. Well, praise God. Um, I, I, I guess we'll uh, have to... End oh, this is September. Uh, September, we are joining... Uh, one church in real real on Sundays and uh, that's 32 Todd Mill Lane and um, a Church of the Nazarene at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock okay 10 o'clock and um, I will be remaining after the service it's a time for us to uh, get to know our brothers and sisters and to begin to fellowship and create a spirit of unity and oneness among us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Uh, so I want to encourage you and get the word out. Let our other folks know who weren't able to be on tonight. Uh, Bible study. Uh, encourage them to show up and get to meet the rest of their family. Praise God. All right. God bless and God keep. We love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all.
Bye bye. Love you guys. Bye. Love you guys, man. Night. Good night. Good night, Dave. <laughs> Good night, bro, Kevin. Good night. Good night, Good night, Ashley. Yo, Good night. What's up? Good night, good night, bro, Barry. Good night, sister. Good night. Good night. That's Brandon. Good night. <laughs> night, Pastor Brandon and his, and his whole tribe. Yeah, Pastor Brandon. And give him oh, a Your baby was so cute. We was in here just laughing, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Give her a good little kid. over the place, man. She is so yeah. cute. She my so little girl. Uh-huh. Well, you, you, need, you need another one? Because I got plenty. <laughs> I got plenty over here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> she can be cute can all over there. He can work it out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. All right. God bless you. Love you, you all. Love you guys. God bless everybody. Bye. Good night.